So, good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully, you can hear me okay, because I can definitely hear myself. But um, so, my name is Juan Nava. I am a uh, senior field engineer here in Trumpet. I've been here almost two years now. Uh, it's still kind of strange that I've been here. Uh, so, I will be talking about Red A to B as our uh, as our A to B and uh, network monitoring solution. It just feels a little weird because uh, most of the people are on the left side as opposed to uh, kind of spread out. So I was like, do I need to look left and right or just mostly left? Sorry, I'm not trying to exclude anybody. Okay, so uh, one thing I will point out that A2B is a registered trademark of Analog Devices Inc. Uh, I won't mention that again, but in case you keep seeing the little A2B with the registered mark, that's why. So we uh, we ended up developing a new tool uh, called Rad A2B. We ended up working with Analog Devices to, to develop this. Um, and I just lost my train of thought. Uh, so, seriously, I just lost my train of thought. Okay, so we've been working with analog devices uh, to develop this tool. Uh, and so here's a picture that of the, the actual of the actual tool. The uh, we ended up releasing this tool back in December of last year, uh, though we've been probably working on it for almost a year now, probably even more than that. And uh, so there's a picture of it. Uh, do you like the blue on it for some reason? I keep looking at it. Uh, so this is just a tool. I'm, we're going to deep dive a little bit more. So we'll do that, deep dive a little bit more in the tool itself. But right now, let's start with some of the basics and understand what A2B really is. And I'm not going to deep dive every single aspect of it, but just some of the basics so we can get some of the terminology out of the way. So as you hear me talk, we understand what we're talking about, at least uh, what's going on. So A2B stands for Automotive Audio Bus. Uh, this was actually designed and developed by analog devices. Uh, this system can support up to 11 nodes. So the main node is going to be, uh, well, you're going to have one main node and you can have up to 10 sub nodes. Now, from a terminology perspective, the main node used to be called master and the sub nodes used to be called slaves. Uh, that re terminology was recently changed. So I'm going to try and stick to the new terminology. Uh, the sub nodes can be an amplifier, speakers, microphone sensors. So a sensor could be like an Excel accelerometer. Uh, it is one unshielded twisted pair uh, that communicates uh, throughout your entire system. It is a daisy chain. And uh, we'll see that here momentarily in the picture. And that A2B does carry control data. It does carry uh, audio and clock data as well. So the whole system does synchronize to one clock. The, uh, the maximum length between nodes can be up to 15 meters, but the entire network can only be up to a maximum 40 meters. The, uh, the bus can be up to 50 megabits per second, and it will carry I2C or I squared C and I2S or I squared S. Uh, most of the time I use I2C or I2S. So from a traditional wiring topology, you'll see here that in the past, at least you know when you're not using like A to B in this case, uh, most most devices in a vehicle would have two wires, you know, positive and, and positive and negative. And so you send each each device, you know, your positive and negative for the individual speakers or individual mics. And then if, depending on how your system's configured, the head unit might need to send multiple uh, items to the amplifier. If you if you you got an amplifier. And then from the amplifier, of course, it would go to your speakers. And of course, you have a pair of that. So this, this is not expensive. This tends to be cheap per node because there's no, no logic, there's no circuit boards. It's just you know, dumb device, right? There's not really logic in there. Uh, the, the downside of this is that it is a lot of wires. It's heavy. So you pay the price. You save the money in the devices, but you pay the price in, in copper. And as you've seen, everything goes up in copper. So sometimes circuitry can be a little cheaper than the copper. So now that we move over to an A2B type of wiring, everything in this daisy chain. So you do have a twisted pair that goes across every single module. The, uh, the system can provide some level of uh, power. And I believe if I remember correctly for this chip, series of chips, it's 300 milliamps. So long as it's within the budget of these devices, uh, you can power that with the same bus. You don't need additional power on top, on top of that. So how does this communicate? So A2B uses this concept called a super frame. A super frame has it, what's called, it's really two parts to this. One part is the, uh, the sync control frame in a sync response frame. 
So what this does is basically your main node sends out the first message, which is your sync control frame, and that will go down every single module until it gets into your last slave. Once it gets to the last slave, it will the last slave will then respond with a sync response frame, and then that will go back up from the last sub node up to the main. Uh, so this will happen in about 20.83 microseconds. So this happens really quickly. The sampling rate is for this example is 48 kil kilohertz, but you can configure the system to be 44.1 kilohertz as well. Uh, so when when we talk about communication from the main node down to your sub to your last sub node, that's considered going downstream. When you're going from the uh, so that's your downstream communication. When you're going from your last sub node up to your main node, that's considered your upstream communication. So normally you'll just, you'll either talk about downstream or upstream. And that usually tells you which direction things are flowing. Uh, so just like mentioned before, the super frame will contain ITC data or I, I2S, uh, I squared C, I squared S, and then two data. So a little bit more terminology. So just like I mentioned right now, the downstream is from your main node down to your last sub node. And then every uh, message will go down through every sub node. And then when you go upstream, it goes from your last sub node back through every node that's in between and uh, up to your to your main node. Now, each of these modules would normally have a A side and a B side. A side will always go towards your master or your main, your main node. And your B side will always go down to your last sub node or towards, towards that. And they'll become kind of important once we cover how to simulate, well, how to wire it up simulation wise. Uh, now, A to B does use data slots. So when we talk about the actual data that goes into, into it, uh, the uh, the, date, the payload part is can be compared into thirty two uh, up to thirty two uh, data slots or channels. So typically, this will be compared either to TDM sixteen or TDM thirty two. Uh, TDM just stands for time division multiplexing, so it's just your time slots or your, your channels. Uh, typically, this is going to be 16 or 32, but you do have other additional ones. For some reason, uh, 24, I don't remember that was correct or not. You have to double check that. Uh, okay. Uh, the other part is discovery. So, what discovery is really the process of when the bus is going to initialize. And so, this is the bus initializing. And then it's going to start programming all the nodes that are in the system. So the way it's going to be is it wakes up the bus, starts communicating to the first node, it programs it, and then it finishes. And then the next sub node goes off to that, gets programmed, and it just keeps going down, down the daisy chain until the entire sub, until the entire uh, network is programmed. Uh, during this, this programming process, you do have full line diagnostics. So you can do detection like, like short the ground, short the battery, and some of the wires being you know, touching, touching each other, for example. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the hardware itself. So here's our device. Of course, now we have a few more pictures. Uh, the device can be powered either a barrel connector, so it does come with a solar power supply. Uh, you can also power it from the DB9. Uh, you can connect to this device as well from USB and Ethernet. So it depends on what your PC may have. You can do either one. And then the white connector is your Molex plug for uh, connecting to the actual A to B portion of it. Uh, this device does have CAN support, uh, two CAN channels and one channel, and that will be connected through your DB9. So the DB9 would be this case in case you just in case you do. Uh, our device does use the uh, third generation, which is a 242X series chip. I know there's a newer version of it, which is a 243 front and that we'll have a version of that one later. We're expecting to have something like that later this year. Um, this will copy your trust, your bus traffic without any latency. Uh, this tool can can monitor your ITC data, GPIO states, and your interrupts uh, all on the same bus. Uh, the, the, the device does have support for J2534 as well as your RP1210. Uh, so this you, you can use like GMS BPS to, to uh, program. Uh, you can also port, use the port DET, Diac RA, and Chrysler CDA. Uh, the next uh, point at the bottom where it says multi, uh, monitor multi channel live audio is really more of a vehicle spy a portion, which I'll show in a later slide what that really means. So, uh, 
Uh, so I do have a pinout, so you can see what what this is. And I have this more for me, so if I ever have to go back and review this in, in YouTube, because this may not be on our website, <laughs> that way I can go back and look at this and go, hey, this is how it's connected. Uh, but so the uh, the reason I did this is because the uh, the Molex connectors, that to me to me was the least intuitive connector, so I ended up adding all the pins so we can see this. Uh, but again, I'm going to reference this back in the future and uh, look at this. Uh, so your Molex Molex connector is going to have your uh, your monitor A's and P's. And monitor AMP is really what you're going to be using to monitor A to B data. Not so this this is a little different than some of the other tools that exist in the market. Most of the market usually you go through the device. In our case, it doesn't go through the device. You connect through it like you're doing can chat. So you connect your positive and your negative or P and M, and uh, that from, that's all you need really to monitor your A to B data. Uh, we do have channels of uh, A and B or port A and, a and B. So if you remember from earlier, that's basically your A goes to your main node, and then your B channel will go to your last sleep node. Okay, so how do we connect this? And I brought, I'm bringing this up, up just because from all the engineers that I've worked with, it's not intuitive because most of them work with other tools where you connect their tool in between the models. And so in our case, it doesn't do that. You connect pins 11 and 13, which is your monitor P and monitor M, and then you connect to the different points of the bus, wherever you want to monitor. So because of how A to B communicates, because data can be manipulated as it goes down, down the system. So, so in this case, I'm showing that you connect between the head unit, which is going to be your main node, and then the first sub node. So anything that the head unit sends down downstream, it, the A to B bus is you can monitor that data. However, anything that goes upstream, so if I'm taking, let's say, for example, the last sub node, which in this case would be like your active silver so that communication may or may not actually make it up to your main node because systems do have the ability to take that data and completely remove it off the bus. Uh, it's a bit of an optimization. So if it doesn't need to make it all the way to that end, it will remove it. And this also goes down to the other end. So where you connect is extremely important, especially if you want to see certain communication. Uh, so like a microphone, it may never make it to a cell phone. It may make it to the head unit, right? So it just depends on how the system is configured. Uh, so this is just a different picture uh, where you can connect. So again, depends on where you need to monitor. So if you need to monitor uh, between two nodes, you can certainly move that, that connection. Now, my favorite part about A to B, I love this. And the reason I, I really enjoy this part because it's the simplest thing I've ever used to go online with to monitor any device. There's no database that you need. You literally go into the vehicle, plug in two cables for your communications. You use a power supply that comes with it, assuming you don't want to wire additional wires. You connect to your PC and you go. That's all you really need. Um, and I'll walk through the vehicle spy part of, part of that right now in a moment. Here. So from a simplicity perspective, it's quite simple. Uh, I mean, when you're doing CAN, you can do the same thing, but if you really want to decode the data, you still got to load in the database. In this case, we don't have to do load in the database. Vehicle Spy will do all that, that, uh, that, in, that what's necessary for you to visualize the data. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Vehicle Spy and ready to be. Uh, so in this case, I'm, gonna, I'm using as an example 3.9810, which is our current version. So you'll want to use that or something later to, uh, to do some of the stuff that I'm going to be showing. So when you start up vehicle spy, you're going to go spy networks, and then you're going to click on your A to B tracker. This is going to be your window. That's going to be your GUI where you're going to be visualizing all the data that you need for, for A to B. So, uh, so before you go online, it's kind of important to understand what you want to see. So writing to B actually gets configured with the ITC data that gets sent out on the bus. Uh, maybe I, I skipped over that part, but when the bus wakes up uh, in the configuration of I2C data actually gets sent over, and so that's how the modules get programmed. Now, our device actually uses that I2C data to configure itself as well. So it, it, it knows how many channels you're using, it knows everything that you it needs to know to configure, and it helps you display what you need to, you need to see. Uh, so if you want to see like the I2C data, you, your, your vehicle spot needs to be running, of course, your device needs to be powered up. 
and then turn on your system. So it's kind of important that your system is not communicating when connected in order for that for that device to be, to be configured. If you decide to try and connect the device after the system is actually communicating, you're going to have to somehow turn off the system or wait, let it go to sleep and then turn it back on, uh, wake it back up. Uh, sometimes it's a simple change power mode. If you're on the bench, sometimes it's a simple switch that you can flip on and off, and then you can get the system to your initial. So that discovery process is extremely important for us, for the device to self configure, and then for you to be able to visualize that data. Now, Vehicle Spy does not need to be actually running in order to for the device to configure. So you can still have the routing to be connected to the system and vehicles by disconnected and it will still configure the device. And I can go back in later and see the audio. I just can't see the, the data that was the ITC data that was in the system to configure the entire system. So I wouldn't be able to visualize that moment. But if there's any data that I can see that comes out during that time you know, as normal communication goes out, then you can see that. You just wouldn't have captured that first part. And now that's really true of anything, right? So if you're communicating any bus, you can't see what's happened in the past. But in this case, the ITC is kind of important for the device to self configure. Okay. So to go online, uh, you're simply going to click on the little uh, clear blue button, and you're going to either run with transmit or run with monitor. So run with monitor would be when we want to send out data from the other spine. Uh, in this case, uh, for what we're going to cover is really just monitor. We're not going to really send anything. But if you're doing any kind of simulation for uh, CAN and, and LIN, uh, maybe that's something you might want to select. So, uh, yeah. So keep in mind that I'm only really covering the A2B, but the tool can monitor it, CAN and LIN as well. So you can still use messages view to, to, to see that data. Okay, so as a GUI, so in this case, the system has initialized. And so if I look at my bottom part down here, so the bottom pane down here, that's going to be my I2C data. Uh, the part up here, the top pane, that's going to be our I2S data or our audio data. And so every channel that you're going to have available in that network is going to be displayed here. So in this case, I have a very simple system. I know it's only got two channels up and it's got two channels downstream and two channels upstream. So I'm only going to visualize that. So in this case, I have a little simple setup. So this is uh, actually captured off the demo that's downstairs right now. And uh, so right now, the demo downstairs, we're only sending two channels of audio for a stereo that go, in this case, upstream. And then there's nothing going the other way. So you're only going to visualize audio going in one direction because the other one's not capturing anything. There's no data going the other, the other direction. But if you have a system that has a lot of nodes, you're probably going to you're definitely going to see a lot more nodes or more channels here. Because you're going to have probably more slots required for the entire system to communicate properly. Communicate properly. Uh, you're also able to create custom filters on the bottom right pane, and then you can sort uh, order, do a uh, sort order, so like eight, uh, from high to low, low to high, A to Z, Z to A, and that's just by clicking the box at the top to, to get that to sort out. <clears throat> So this feature just got introduced in the latest version of the Spy. So now we have the ability to take a specific stream. So from up from the first window, was a stream stream to, out, to output. The, uh, we do have this, we can specifically select the stream and the, the ID number is right here, on which one you want to see. And then you can actually output that to the speakers of your computer. Uh, in this case, I happen to have a different speaker connected to my PC. So I get two options, but if you don't have that, you're only going to have one option for your, your uh, this figures on your computer. Does it do that live or do you just say? Yes, that? it's live. Okay. Yep. So if you are in a system where the uh, where the uh, audio is just not working, but you see the little graph one, you simply click the audio stream and you can hear it. So there's been times where I've been trying to do this on my desk at home and nothing's working. I can simply go that, you know, click on this screen and I can see, oh, it's playing. So it must have been something else. Maybe some of my wire wasn't connected properly. So it's, it's a great uh, way to root cause something really, really quick, quicker. Um, you can also erase the buffer. So if you click on the uh, top right button where it says erase, that will erase all the ITC data as well as your audio data. Now the audio data will repopulate almost immediately because that audio is probably streaming as it's going along versus the ITC data, if there's nothing coming out, it's just gonna be black. Uh, so you, you kind of lose that data. And so every part up here, you can, Click, double click on it and it'll give you the options that are available to filter for that specific uh, 
for that specific call. So in this case, I double clicked on the axis and it gives me the broadcast, discovery, non -per uh, peripheral, and then slate. So each one has its different options depending on what's going on for your specific bus. Is this collecting the data in monitor mode? Or is it actually? This, this is just monitor. monitor. This is just monitor. And is there a way to name a stream, uh, associate a stream with a string name, for example, like, a, like I say, stream one is left radio. No, right. not, um, not at this moment. Okay, that would be nice to, so the tester will not have to remember, well, stream one, upstream, we should go to this speaker or something. So yep. right front. We should probably talk afterwards and then we can probably talk about yeah. that. That's, not a, that's actually a pretty good idea to rename the uh, streams to be something more meaningful than one. Yeah, because I believe the uh, method will actually tell you which quadrant it's going to. So you can okay. Know part of the vehicle it's, it's hidden in the Okay. We should definitely have a small conversation afterwards so I can uh, understand how that works a little bit more. Okay, so on the top right, we do have a flip view. Uh, when I first looked at this, I was thinking maybe we would feel adventurous, but the reality is if you have a lot of channels that are going on, you know, if we look at this part where the, uh, the audio is being displayed here, the little graphs, if you have a lot of channels, maybe it's a nice way to visualize more channels than just the limited view on the other, the other view. So really it depends on how you want to visualize and what, what you need to visualize. Uh, so the audios will change accordingly to how your audio is being played out. So if you have, for example, your audio mute, you should see something more like this data where it's just, it's not changing. Uh, or if you lower down the volume. As you increase your volume, you should expect to see something more like the bottom right picture where your audio is, uh, is, is changing as, you know, as you're playing. So if you go louder, you should expect to see some, some change in that graph as well. Uh, some of the future enhancements that we currently are still working on. Uh, so right now we do not have the ability to simulate, but we will have the ability to simulate master or like the main node as well as sub nodes as well. Uh, you will be able to save it in the future, save audio files directly from vehicle spy, so you can save like a WAV file, for example. Um, the audio signals that you saw right now in the graphs, those will be exposed as, uh, I'm not sure exactly how they dispose those yet, but in case you need to do any kind of scripting, so maybe you want to see a threshold goes below a certain value, or maybe goes above a certain value, you might want to trigger off of that logic to know there was a problem perhaps. Um, and then you'll also be able to filter on specific streams. So you can focus just on the stream that you're testing. So maybe all the extra stuff that's there is a little bit too much noise. I mean, visually, and so you can just stream it to one channel and then you can just you know, focus on the test, that, the part that you're testing. Uh, we are going to add some additional support for things that are non-audio, so like accelerometers. And then depending, of course, based on some of the suggestions, we'll probably add some of these additional requirements into the vehicle spike. Uh, however, if there's something that's not meeting your requirements, please talk to us. Talk to me, talk to uh, someone in Intrepid, make sure that we capture the, uh, the needs. Okay, so I'm covering this one. Uh, even though we don't have the uh, support for simulation yet, I thought I'd cover this. It's more the physical connection. So when you want to simulate, so in this case, if I wanted to simulate the head unit, the main node, so I would just connect to channel B from my device. Uh, you would not, you wouldn't, in this case, you wouldn't connect to channel A or port A uh, because all you need is, again, from channel B goes always down to your last sub node. If it was channel A or side A, that goes to your main. So in this case, you would only need to do the, do the side channel B if you want to simulate your master node or your main. Uh, if you were going to simulate, for example, if I wanted to get rid of this sub node here and I wanted to simulate that part, well, then I would need to connect channel A and channel B. Channel A, of course, would go to my main node and my channel B would go to my next sub node. And if I wanted to simulate the last sub node, well, in that case, I would only take in the channel A. There's no need to use channel B in this case. Uh, Vehicle Spy will have this ability in the coming release. Uh, we're hoping to have this ready in the next major release, uh, which should be a couple, probably two months.